Welcome to the Swim Swam Podcast. I'm your host, Coleman Hodges. Joining me today, I've got not one, not two, but three very special guests coming at us from Cambridge, Massachusetts. I've got head coach of Harvard Men's Swimming, Kevin Tyrell, associate head coach of Harvard Men's Swimming, Sam Pitter, and the one and only Harvard Swimming and Diving, Dean Ferris. Hello, everybody. I'm, I'm excited to welcome you all. Um, let's let's get right into it. First of all, what has this semester been like? You know, obviously, it's weird times with a global pandemic happening. Um, Kevin, I'd like to start with you. Just how have you been handling things with students, with swimmers uh, coming back on campus this fall? Sure. Well, it's been a challenge. Uh, I think it's been a challenge for everybody. But uh, the way Harvard did things this year is uh, the only students who were on campus in general, uh, including swimmers, were uh, freshmen. So it was, it was awesome to have the freshmen on campus. We got a lot of long course training in, uh, did a lot of stroke development, and uh, basically Sam and I had one-on-one -on -one time with uh, our, our eight incoming freshmen. So it was, it was fantastic uh, learning environment in that way. Uh, but then on the other side of the coin, it was very disappointing that uh, you know, the, the other three classes were not present. Uh, so we did some training of them, uh, guys specifically that were on the national team uh, off campus. But then we have swimmers and divers all around the world doing training and internships and taking classes remotely, depending on the individual. So it's a very odd circumstance, but mainly we just hope that everybody stays happy and healthy during these times. Okay. I did not realize that. Uh, but that sounds, that sounds like a wild ride for sure. Um, yeah, Sam, give me a little bit of your perspective on handling both that freshman class and then everyone else around the world. Yeah. So a lot of the, um, a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with guys over where they're going to be training, where they're going to be, you know, focusing their efforts this year, because obviously we're not going to see a lot of them for the entire year. And we can talk about what they're, what Harvard's doing next semester. But um, for the freshmen, I think it was really important for them to have that experience, to get adjusted to Harvard, to come to campus, even though it's different, the classes were remote, um, but they, they did a really good job of bonding as a class. So that was the most exciting thing for me. Um, it was only eight of them and they each had their own lane every practice and they got a lot of one-on-one -on -one attention, which was awesome for us. Like, I feel like we learned how they move through the water and what they need so much quicker than we would in a normal year because the whole team would be there. So it was a big advantage for them when they come back and they're ready to compete for us. Um, and then with everybody else, it's been just, you know, kind of monthly check-ins and figuring out how guys are doing with their training, where they're at. Um, we did have a fair amount of guys take the semester off and just focus on internships or just swimming wherever they were. So that was kind of cool to hear what everybody was doing. Yeah, I'm sure. I mean, I feel like I kind of get this sense from Harvard generally, but it's kind of, you do your own thing, you make your own, you, you pave your own way. And certainly in that circumstance, it's, it seems like it's amplified, which is um, on one hand seems kind of hard, but on the other hand, it also seems pretty cool for everyone to get to have that flexibility. Yeah. Um, nice. And so, and then, you know, Dean, you're one of those guys who, who does have some flexibility. How has your fall looked so far? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's obviously been pretty different uh, not having the entire team there, but um, I'm training with a few guys that got approval from the national team um, to, to get coached by Sam and Kevin. Um, so we've been just not training at the Harbor Pool, but at an offsite location. Um, and we're just trying to make the best of it. Obviously, it's not ideal conditions, but I think everybody's kind of, it's kind of a makeshift year in general. So, um, yeah, just trying to have fun, just figuring out as we go, trying not to get too caught up in if they're like pool closings or gym closings or whatever, uh, just try and stay focused on what we can do. And we've been putting a lot of good work. So overall, it's been a good, good fall. Nice. Uh, but let's keep it with you and then we'll kind of go back. Um, I want to 
just hit on what are, what are some positives that, that have come out of this fall? Again, you know, you're training with a smaller group, um, Sam, Kevin, you're working with just that freshman class. Um, you know, it's like, it's, it's just, it's a completely different schedule, completely different setup. What are, what are some things that you feel like you've gained or that have, you know, kind of come out of it that you're like, oh, this is pretty cool in, in these last few months. Yeah, I think, um, obviously Kevin and Sam have worked with me for the past three years. So they know my body pretty well and like what I need in the water. Um, so that's been great. Also just having two coaches for, for four summers. I mean, for most of the fall, it's just been two summers really. Cause, um, we just got two freshmen, um, cause they're taking a year off or a semester off next semester. But, um, so yeah, just having like a one-to-one ratio basically for coaches has been awesome. Um, and we can just be a little bit more specific. Um, don't have to worry about school outside of the water. So, uh, that's a little bit less, less tiring for sure. Um, but yeah, it's just been, it's kind of been a fun semester. It's, it's obviously different, but we can just focus a little bit more on swimming and what we need to do. We don't have to think about dual meets and stuff like that. Um, so it's just a little, been a little bit more consistent for the training, um, and not as many distractions, I would say. Nice. Um, yeah. So back to you, Sam. Um, again, what have, what have you found, uh, in the positive realm of just kind of things that have come from this different format? Yeah. I mean, in a swimming sense, I think, um, the individualized attention we've been able to give the guys is really special. You know, usually Harvard, it's just Kevin and I pretty much on the pool deck for about 40 swimmers. So, um, with a small staff, getting that individualized attention gets harder and harder as your team gets more successful. So, um, you know, having a smaller amount of guys has been great to get to know them better. And obviously we know Dean really well. So kind of hitting him with exactly everything he needs. And I think he like hates us for it at times, but, um, you know, that's been huge, but also on a personal level, just having more time, like at home with, my dogs are just hanging out and getting a little bit more break from the grind of, you know, we can't have all these recruiting visits. We can't have a lot of the other kind of busy work that comes with running a big team. So, you know, it's been awesome to have a little bit more time at home for sure. Yeah. Kevin, same question. Sure. Well, I mean, the nice thing this year has been it just sort of simplified things from a coaching standpoint is normally we're trying to balance in an Olympic year, what we're doing for the kids from a NCAA standpoint, and then balance that with them be either getting ready for their own country's uh, trials or for the U S trials. And this year it's just, you know, I think pretty early on, we realized that Harvard wasn't going to have a season. So it it just put everything in perspective of like, we're going to put everything into the Olympics and, and make sure that we have a great time getting everybody ready for that. Nice. And okay. So Yeah, as 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 college coaches, what has recruiting been like, or not been like uh, for, for for this fall? Well, I mean, it's it's quite frankly been a lot of phone calls and a lot of Zoom calls and a lot of emails. And and the tough about the toughest part about it, I think, for me has been that I really enjoy meeting kids one on one and meeting their families one on one in person. And we don't have the opportunity to do that. So I think it one hurts the the families that are going through it this year in terms of either being able to see campus or in our case, some people can see campus, but they can't meet with the coaching staff in person. And it's hard to get a read on, you know, whether the fit is there between the coaching staff and the swimmer or diver and vice versa. So it's been sort of sterile in terms of, you know, just doing things over the computer. And I think face-to-face is really to get uh, the best read on people from a coaching perspective. And then on the flip side, and more importantly, is, is swimmers and divers funding the right institution for themselves. It's, it's very limiting in that way. Um, so, you know, hopefully things will clear up with the vaccine and go back a little back to, to normal once we hit May, June, July. So this class can really get a, a chance to be on campus and check everything out for whatever institution they're looking at. But uh, Right now, it's just, it's quite frankly, not as much fun. I mean, I love talking to the kids, love talking to their parents, but it's a lot more fun to do that one-on-one and in person than it is over uh, some electronic device. <laughs> Agreed. I, 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 miss, I miss getting to actually interview people in person uh, at swim meets or, or at their practices, but I hear you. This is, you know, 
make make do for now with what we've got. Um, Sam, same question. You know, wh- how has recruiting changed for you uh, this semester? Yeah, so most of my recruiting responsibilities revolve around the visits. So that's been kind of taken off my plate, um, unfortunately. So just trying to figure out creative ways to get the team involved because now the team's allowed to be involved in, in recruiting efforts. So my I've been kind of focused on how to keep them engaged with this class, recruiting the next class of guys and um, with school and everything. And I don't know their schedules as well because they're online. So it's been a little bit difficult to get the guys kind of like engaged and focused and, and letting them know what's going on. So I think for me, it's been fun to kind of tr- find find ways that the that the team can engage with recruits, uh, which they normally couldn't. So that's been interesting, but also just miss having the you know normal standard forty eight hour visit um, and just having the guys on campus for that time would would have been awesome. Yeah, I mean that that the camp- college visits seem like an integral part of every college team season as well as you know every high school and junior or seniors high school experience um which is a bummer but yeah again again you know it seems like everyone's kind of making do and adjusting um dean i mean s- similarly you know it's like the team's not there um like you said you're only training with one to three others um at a time and then you're not worried about school as well so how how are you dealing with with so much less human interaction as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's been, it's been obviously different. I mean, I've been kind of out of, I mean, obviously I didn't have school last year either. So I kind of, that was a big adjustment. So I'm, I would say I was better prepared for this year. Um, I did get a, a puppy in the fall. So that's been, that's been awesome. So um, that's been fun. We're, we're all living together. So we kind of take care, take care of Jasper, my little dog. Um, so that's been fun, but yeah, I think it's just different. I mean, it feels, I feel like we've been in this pandemic for so long that it's almost become the new normal. So it's kind of, I feel like there's going to be adjustment going back to a full team. It's going to be like, Whoa. Um, so I feel like it's just become the new normal and just kind of how it is. Um, I would say it was harder over the summer when, um, when it first started happening and you can really hang out with people. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting back to a big group of guys training and going on training trip and stuff like that. Um, especially around this time, it's, I'm kind of missing the, having that big group, especially when it gets hard and in, in these months where there's not a lot going on, it's cold out and you just kind of want to like hang out with all the, all the guys. So, um, but we're just trying to, it's obviously fun hanging out with some of the younger guys that I didn't get to meet last year. Um, and then obviously the new freshmen. So getting to know them and kind of getting to know their class um, through them is, has been fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it is. It, it has been a big adjustment um, to say the least. And I, you bring up a good point. I think it'll be a big adjustment now going back to normal, yeah. um, which who knows, you know, what that'll look like or when that'll be. Um, let's, I, I want to get into a little bit specifics. You know, you guys have, have done different kinds of workouts, all three of you. Um, has there been a, a workout in the past few weeks, few months that stood out to you as being, uh, particularly hard coaches that you thought you were like, Oh, that, that one really went well, or that one exceeded expectations. Um, Dean, Dean, let's start with you. Is there a practice that stood out to you in the last few weeks? Um, let's see, it's put me on the spot. Um, I think I've been pretty happy with how I've trained after us open. Um, mm-hmm. so there was a set, it was maybe two or three weeks ago where we were doing on Mondays, we do a bunch of hundreds threshold. Um, and that's been kind of the, the theme of the last few weeks. And there was one set where we did, I forget how many it was, but, um, it was like 12 or 15, 100s where you're trying to hold pace. And I was holding like 49s, which for me is, I'm not the greatest in practice. So for me, that was awesome. Um, and I died at the end, but it was, it was like a good set where I actually took it out and didn't kind of like ease into it. Um, so I think those, like those Mondays have been pretty hard recently, 
but um, nothing's really nothing's really stood out. I've just been proud of like, especially in October, it was just me and um, Will Grant, the other kid that we're training with. Um, so just kind of getting up on on those hard days with just two of us um, was pretty awesome. And it's a little bit easier when you have 30 other guys and they're all training and getting loud and stuff. But uh, when it's just two of you, you kind of have to be like relying on each other. So um, I would say I was proud of that just in, in general. So, yeah. The, sorry, quick, quick follow up. Um, you said you've been really proud of the training since U.S. Open. Give me a quick synopsis of how you felt about uh, U.S. Open, especially that yeah. being like, you know, first race in a while. Yeah, like obviously it was my first it was a first race and first long course race and long course practice pretty much all in one, um, since Des Moines, I guess. Um, so yeah, I think typically, um, I think I've, I didn't have a lot of long course training when I was on a club team. So my summers were, I was always kind of a little bit behind, I would say from short course, just cause I didn't have the race experience and stuff. Um, but I was really happy with where I was, physically and race wise, considering like everything that had gone on in the fall. Um, obviously I wanted to be faster, but, um, it was, it was a really good stepping point. And honestly, I kind of exceeded what I thought was going to happen just because it was my first race and, and everything. And I just hadn't gotten used to long course yet. So, um, I was happy with that. And I think that little reset, just like getting out, going to a new city, just doing something different um, definitely helped. And like that, this last like month and a half, I guess, um, since then or month has been awesome. Um, I think it just gave me a little reset and I've been a little bit more, just a, a little more energy and practice and just kind of excited. So I'm, I'm ready for the, the January meet. Hopefully it happens. Um, I think it will, but um, so I'm excited to race there. Nice. Uh, all right. So back to you, Sam, um, a practice that you've been particularly pleased with lately. Yeah. I actually going to mention the same practice that Dean was referring to, but, um, it was 12 hundreds. And so we've been alternating kind of working on figuring out how Dean should change gears in a race and how Dean can say consistent. And this was one of the days where we asked him to be more consistent across all 12, um, and I did not expect him to basically go 1249s, you know, and he was, he was there pushing himself from the gate, which he also has sometimes a little bit of hesitancy to do. So it was fun to watch for sure. And I think in general, I'm really proud of his work on his backstroke actually all fall. I think he's done a really good job. We've been trying to purposely mix in more backstroke so that, um, he's ready to go for that when we ask him to. Um, and so he started off when he first got back, like not in a good spot and not able to hold times that he should be as a, you know, 43, six backstroker. But, um, I think now that he's, he's put, put in the work, he's, he's getting down to when we ask him to go hundreds threshold backstroke, he's down in the 54s and 53s, which has been great too. Yeah. Nice way to go. Dean. Uh, and way to go, Sam and Kevin. I'm uh, sorry, Kevin, uh, a practice that you've been uh, particularly happy with lately? Sure. Well, I'll probably go in a little bit of a different direction is that um, I think my main job with Dean is sort of twofold is to keep an eye on how he's doing mentally and then uh, to make sure the stroke technique is in the right spot, particularly when we drive up his tempo. Um, so when we work on Dean's freestyle, for example, uh, there are certain points where he doesn't rotate his right hip or the right side of his torso enough. And so there's been a lot of places where we've thrown drag socks on for either a burst of speed like 15 meters or a full 25, where uh, what, you know, the past few college seasons, he would get to that point and his stroke would break down. And, you know, he'd swim kind of sloppy, kind of like he did on the last 25 of his 100 at NCAAs, the last time he swam at NCAAs. But if he can say, if he can hold that stroke together, like he has been on our, our power and speed sets with resistance, then uh, what he can do is he's going to do a better job racing in long course with that. So that's really what I've, I've been happy with is that, you know, Sam will write some wonderful uh, 
set to make sure that he can hold on to his uh, power and speed. And then my job is to try to force him to, you know, do that at a higher tempo, uh, doing a stroke the right way. So it doesn't break down in a race. And he's done a nice job with that. Still got to keep on wailing away at it. it. Never, the process never ends, but uh, he's, he's, he's improving on it. And that's all we're looking for on a daily basis. I, I love this dissection of, of uh, theories and ideas and, all right, this is what we're doing here. This is what we're doing here. I mean, this is, this is why we have a podcast. Okay. Um, <laughs> but thank you. I, I really appreciate hearing all of that insight. That's super, that's super fun. Um, so, you, I mean, you, there's been no races, specific, you know, especially for, for y'all, for Harvard. Um, you only have eight eight freshmen, you know, on the team on campus. And so how have you been trying to supplement that with your swimmers that you have there, as well as, you know, the swimmers that are that are out there in the world? Obviously, Dean got to go to US Open, but you know, it's like you still have the the the, the rest of the team there. Um what how 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 are you trying to get them get race reps in? Um, Kevin, we can start with you. Sure. Well, I mean, it sort of happens in two different ways, and it certainly depends on where uh, where the people are in the world. So we have some uh, international swimmers over in Europe that have actually been able to have some meets. Um, some of our guys from the states have gone to uh, training sites, a couple of training sites in California, and they've been able to have some meets. Uh, one of our swimmers uh, just had a meet this past weekend, did really well in the 800 free, for example. Uh, we have got a few guys down in Texas that are uh, training down in Austin and, and they're really enjoying that down there too. And, and they've been able to get in meets, but it's uh, you know, the, the tough thing is to get the guys to communicate with each other. They don't want to uh, make somebody else feel bad by saying, Hey, I actually got, got a chance to get in a meet. And I think that when guys get the chance to do that and they share it with other people, even if they're just racing in a practice, it sort of elevates everybody. So I've sort of had to push that a little bit more, which is, you know, don't be embarrassed about the fact you got to meet. That's a, that's a great thing. Share it. And you know what? Somebody just only gets to get off and go off the blocks at the end of a practice with coaching a stopwatch. That's, that's just as good. Keep cheering each other on and, and stay positive and, you know, stay in the lane of doing things you can control. Don't worry about the things you can't. In most, in most cases, our guys, you know, have nothing to do with the organization of a meet or their LSC decisions or their government decisions in their state. So just have a good time with what you're capable of doing and what you're allowed to do. And other than that, keep everybody safe and happy. Yeah. Sam. Yeah. I think um, specifically with the guys on campus um, and Dean and his small group, it's been really like focused on the long term more than ever before because we have this whole chunk of time without um you know our real focus is trials or for some of the guys like if they're from another country they're trying to get a fina b cut time but um they're still not tapering until march for that so you know it was really it really racing really wasn't the focus for the fall. I'd say, I mean, we tried to, we got up and did some lactate sets for sure, but it was more like you probably had a couple months off and out of the water and we need to get back to work and we need to set this up for a 10 month cycle versus, you know, we would usually do, you know, mid season meet and then our IVs and NCAAs. So trying to get them ready to, for the long term instead of the short term goals. I think it's been a good learning process for them um, and for everybody, honestly, to, to think about the bigger picture a little bit instead of the smaller cycles. We, we've been more focused on the big cycles. So the racing definitely was like every other week or maybe every third week. And we've been doing some some sets off the blocks at Harvard with the guys or, or with Dean. But, um, you know, for Dean specifically, it's really like, let's get all the work in now. So we are ready to race as much as we can in the spring. Um, so just kind of grinding it out, which he's pretty tired right now. So, um, it's been good. Nice. Uh, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. Dean, I, I asked you about how your racing went. Uh, I'm curious if you watched the ISL at all. And if so, if you had thoughts on it. Yeah, you know, I did, I watched a few, I didn't watch it like every time, but sometimes we would come back from practice and it would be on. Um, yeah, it definitely looked like a fun meet. Um, 
I think this year, I didn't really watch it last year. I think this year is on like CBS or something. So it was easier to watch. Um, yeah, obviously it looked like a fun time. Um, I tried not to look at it too much just because I kind of like to just focus on what I'm doing. Um, sometimes looking at times and everything, everybody's in a different spot. So um, just trying to stay on, stay focused on what I need to do. But yeah, it looked awesome. I was definitely keeping in touch with some of the guys from Texas that were down there, like Will Lacone and um, Townley and some of those guys. So yeah, just, just hearing what it's like, it's, it sounds like it was a really fun meet and a, and a fun six weeks or whatever it was um, down there. And they got some good racing in, but yeah, it was definitely pretty impressive to, to watch the the times that I did. So, uh, Sam and Kevin, I'm, I'm curious about the same thing. Did you guys watch ISL at all? And if so, did you have any takeaways or thoughts, um, as, as coaches, as swim fans, Sam? Yeah, I think it's, it's really cool what they're trying to do. It's awesome to see. I like the structure, how they restructured it kind of like tournament style. And then the, the fifties, the challenge fifties are really cool. I think it's bringing a lot of positive things to the sport, which I'm most excited about. I don't have too much investment other than just as a swim fan. So I, I didn't follow a lot of the times, but it was interesting to see a lot of the different strategies, I guess. I think how some people were able to each week or each kind of dual meet get a little bit faster. And I, I was thinking in my brain as a coach, just being like, I wonder how like the training and how you got ready for that and how you prepared to like, battle and battle it out every couple you know days so that was pretty cool to, to think about yeah kevin well i just think it, it's another avenue to keep people in the sport longer and I, I think as we're seeing with with athletes in all sports including swimming you know the longer they they stay in it uh sometimes they continue to develop physically but they certainly develop mentally uh you know into their late 20s in terms of uh, knowing how to race the right way and how to prepare your body the right way. So anytime we can keep swimming in the spotlight in a good way, and you can also keep people in the sport for a longer period of time, I think it's just good for uh, the ISL to be around because it's going to keep uh, swimming moving in the right direction for the next few decades. Could not agree more. Uh, <clears throat> and yeah, as a, as a swimming fan, I think it's a, it's a cool spectacle. It's super fun to watch. But enough about that. We're down to 10 minutes. I want to nerd it up about Harvard history about and, and about Harvard, tra- more, more, more so about Harvard tradition. Um, and, and first off, I want to talk about HYP. That's the Harvard, Yale, Princeton, try dual meet, try meet that happens every, it's the end of January, beginning of February. Is that right? Correct. Okay. And I mean, you guys, you know, we've, we've seen Dean in the past drop some, some, uh, eye popping times. We've seen everyone goes pretty fast at that meet. It's almost like you guys have two conference meets. It's kind of crazy. Um, Kevin, I want to start with you. You know, when you started coaching at Harvard, what, what, what were your thoughts on HYP and then how does, you know, your team approach that meet knowing that a couple weeks later you have conference and then a few weeks after that, you know, for some you've got NCs. Yeah. Well, you certainly, from a swimming perspective, as a coach where we sort of divide the team into two groups, there's uh, swimmers that could be their last meet of the season if they don't make the conference championships. So we give them a full shave and taper for that meet. So those guys are excited because their year is about to end. So they're ready to rock that way, which is awesome. Uh, and then for our guys who are getting ready for uh, NCAAs and Ivy Championships, it's sort of, you know, two camps within that group. Uh, the first one is guys who already we feel confident uh, from the midseason meet of being in, in good contention to make NCAAs. We try to rest them a uh, little bit for Ivy Championships, but not very much. Uh, so HYP, just you're sort of swimming through that. Um, and it's all based on emotion at that point. And um and then for the guys who are, who are tapering for Ivies to try to get ready for NCAAs to make the cut, uh, they might start a little bit of a rest there, uh, particularly in the weight room as we get ready for HYP. But, uh, you know, going back to your larger point, the thing about HYP is the emotions there are crazy. I mean, these, these teams have swum each other since the like late 1930s, early 1940s. And it's, it's gone on and on and on. And you get a lot of alumni from all three schools back in whatever location doesn't need to just be your, your place. Uh, 
my favorite location happens to be Yale's pool. Everybody is on top of you. There's not a lot of deck space and all the teams and the emotions are very raw and open and the alumni are right on top of you too. Uh, I get a kick out of running the meet down there every time. And it's, it's, it's unbelievably fun that people are so pumped up about a dual meet that people do things that they don't expect simply because of the environment. And it's, it's wonderful. Uh, it's a, it's a great, great tradition. Uh, I believe the coaches, uh, you know, that over the decades really just made this something that, you know, lives up to its hype. You know, people talk about that in the recruiting process, but then when they get there, like, yeah, this actually is as good as people said it was. <laughs> God, I want to go to this meet now. <laughs> I'm, I'm hyped up for it. it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So Sam, you've been, you've been with Harvard for quite a while now, but you know, coming into coming into Harvard, what did you make of this tradition, and did it live up to the hype? Can you? Yeah, confirm? it was. <laughs> I specifically remember the meet that Kevin's referring to when he says that Yale is his favorite because I think it was our first year together, and it were you know I don't know if for the visual for people it's like Yale's in a bowl basically like the stands are very steep, the the pool is in the center, and it gets very loud in there. So I think for me, it was like shocking how much these guys stepped up to swim as fast as they did when I knew as their coach that there was not a lot of rest involved. <laughs> and I remember just being from that meet, just taking in be like, I'm so excited for Ivy's now, because if you're doing this after almost no rest and we're actually heading into our taper, like Ivy's is going to be off the charts. And I think you know, this, this, that part of the season from HYP to IVs to NCAAs, obviously it's everybody's favorite, but to have that meet to kick it off, it's like a six long week excitement phase for the whole team. And the team really just bonds, comes together. They're training really well. The vibe on the pool deck is just so much different from that point on. And it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, man, that's six week excitement train sounds like a lot. But yeah, that sounds we also have to sounds give them to pump the brakes a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, you know, Dean, having gone through this three times yourself, I mean, is there, is there, is there a come down for Ivy's even? I mean, like, is HYP <laughs> more excitement than Ivy's or is that, is it, do you know, do the coaches and athletes have they kind of got it down to where you kind of ramp up? Yeah, I think HYP is different. Uh, obviously, it's time finals, so um, it's a little bit – the excitement is like it's um, – you don't have to – I would say Ivy's, you have to kind of be careful with how you use your energy over the, the four-day meet um, or, yeah, four-day meet, uh, especially like my junior year, I didn't rest for that really a lot. Um, obviously, it's that time of the year where we're doing more power and stuff, so you feel better, but um, – HYP, you kind of like you have the Friday, it's usually a Friday night session, then Saturday, like midday session. So the Friday, especially the first session, like everybody's so excited. And it's kind of like you can just like let it all go. Like for that one session, you don't have to worry about, all right, we have prelims, finals, like all this stuff, four day meet. So I think that's that makes it kind of special. You can kind of just like let it go for that one session um, and not have to worry about like conserving air energy or anything like that um you also only have one shot at the swim so everybody's just kind of like ready for it but yeah honestly every i mean my freshman year is at yale uh so, and then the last two years i had were at we're at harvard um but especially my junior year we were definitely i mean we went i think an a cut in the four or two free relay that was our fastest two free relay we ever did so um <laughs> and it was the first race to the meet so um yeah, definitely a lot of excitement. I love having it at home. Um, but um, yeah, it's just an all around just fun meet. And it's fun to have guys that, you know, it's their last meet. So they're, they're pretty excited and, and that you can just feed off that energy. And it doesn't really matter what you did that week. It's just like, you're always going to swim fast there. So man i'm 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 ready to go <laughs> next, year, yeah. next year next yeah. year uh I, I might have to make a trip up to up to the northeast okay so we're down <laughs> we're down to two minutes um 
parting thoughts on moving forward? You know, give me give me 30 seconds. Um, Dean, we can start with you of what are you looking forward to just in these next couple months? Yeah, next couple months. I mean, hopefully things start to clear up uh, and look a little bit better in terms of the pandemic. And um, obviously excited to race and hopefully we have some more USA swimming meets and stuff and and just get to a more more normal, whatever that is. So um, that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Sam? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see how these guys race in this pro series the next couple months. Um, that's, that'll be exciting just to have that to look forward to almost every month. Fingers crossed everything goes as planned. Um, but to get the racing in will be huge. Kevin? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, since we have Dean on the call here, I think we'll sort of talk a little <laughs> bit more about Dean, which is, you know, one of the kind of amazing things about Dean uh, that works to his benefit and to his detriment at certain points is he's an extraordinarily humble young man. And so I'm looking forward to the development of Dean between now and trials in terms of actually believing that he's as good as he is. And because he's modest, he doesn't want to necessarily admit that to anybody, including himself. But I think we have the ability over the next seven months to really work on Dean's uh, you know, just having fun racing, believing that he's as good as he can, because I think he's got another like two or three gears and I'm not just one and he's going to do some awesome stuff. And it's a, uh, it's a pleasure to work with him. I'm sure that'll embarrass him, but the, the truth is he's a real, he's a, he's a really nice young man who wants to do good things. He just needs a kick in the pants every once in a while. And in, in terms of thinking that he is as good as he is. You've been listening to the swim swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swim Podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.